Hello, in this video, Kana and I will explain the Knut Morris Pratt algorithm for matching patterns in a string. The problem that the algorithm solves is the one of searching for the occurrence of a word or string in a sentence or larger string with the help of a prefix table in an efficient way, or, in other words, it is used for finding patterns in a string. For example, suppose we are looking for the number of occurrences of EC in the word Mississippi. The naive and slow method would search for the pattern in the string character by character, as you can see on the screen. Whenever there is a mismatch, the naive algorithm would shift the whole pattern by one and start comparing from the beginning. On the other hand, the KMP algorithm would use a pre-computed prefix table to determine the largest possible shift in order to avoid previously performed comparisons. As you might have guessed, the KMP algorithm is a lot faster. In terms of big O for the worst case of the naive method, let us have a string of A's of length N and a pattern of length M. We would make a total of N minus M plus 1 into M comparisons resulting in a time complexity of the order of N into M. On the other hand, the KMP algorithm would take M time for the pre-computation part and linear time for searching. In order to explain the algorithm, we will introduce two scientists. Hans is a successful chemist who used kleptonium to obtain the formula for invisibility. Carl wants to do the same, so he breaks into Hans' lab to check if he's on the right track. Because he has to be fast, Carl decides to use the KMP algorithm to match his formula against Hans. As we mentioned, the KMP algorithm has a pre-computation part which outputs a prefix function pi. The prefix function pi for a pattern encapsulates knowledge about how the pattern matches against shifts of itself. This way we can skip invalid shifts and save computational time. For the example on the screen, after shifting by distance d, we can already see that shifting by d plus 1 and matching b with a would be invalid, so we shift by d plus 2 instead. We compute the prefix table by comparing the pattern against itself. Basically, for each subpattern of the string, we compute the length of its longer prefix that is also a proper suffix. If that went above your head, please pause the video and take a moment to understand the definitions. Let's start and compute the prefix table for example. We begin by initializing m with the size of our pattern, which is 6. Pi of 1 becomes 0 because a subpattern of size 1 cannot have a proper prefix or suffix. And i is initiated with 0 as well. We start iterating through our string at j equals 2, as we already calculated pi of 1. Basically, you can imagine we're matching the pattern against itself. Inside the fold loop, if we already found some matches, but the next element does not match anymore, we use the information that we already have in the prefix function pi to restart at the point where the elements would potentially match again. We do this using the while loop. If the elements match as in if condition, we increment i and move to the next character. At the end of the iteration through the for loop, we add the value of i in the prefix function. Let's do this practically. Currently, i is equal to 0, so we don't go into the while loop. p of 1 is not equal to p of 2, so pi of 2 becomes 0. For the next iteration, i is still 0 and j equals 3. We don't go into the while loop, but the if condition is satisfied, so we increment i by 1. Therefore, pi of 3 becomes 1. Now j is equal to 4 and i is equal to 1. P of 2 does not match j of 4, so we go into the while loop, and i gets the value of pi of 1, which is 0. We move to the if condition, but this is not satisfied, so pi of 4 becomes 0. Similarly, for j equals 5 and i equals 0, we see that p of 1 matches p of 5. Therefore, the if condition is satisfied, i is incremented, so pi of 5 becomes 1. For the final iteration, j is 6 and i is 1. Again, we don't go into the while loop because p of 2 is equal to j of 6, so we increment i, which becomes 2, and we add its value into the prefix function. We shall now see how the search part of the KMP algorithm works. n is the length of the string, m is the length of the prefix table, pi is the prefix function that we calculated earlier. We initialize i as 0 to keep track of the position of the prefix table. Coming to the for loop, the while part is used for skipping previously made matches using the prefix table. The first if statement is used to search for matches between the pattern and the string. The second if statement is used to see if we've matched the pattern in the string and to thereafter look for the next match. We shall now start iterating through our for loop. 
as the first character of the pattern and the string match, the if condition is satisfied and we increment i by 1. We keep iterating through the for loop and incrementing i by 1 till we have a mismatch or till we match the pattern in the string. As we have a mismatch and as i is greater than 0, our while condition is satisfied, so we set i is pi of 3, which is 1 in our case. However, you might notice that our while condition would be satisfied if we have another mismatch, which we do, so we set i is pi of 1, which is 0 in our case. However, we are not yet done with this iteration of the for loop because we need to check whether our if condition is satisfied. As we have a match, it is, and we increment i by 1. We now keep iterating through our for loop and incrementing i by 1 till we find a mismatch or till we match the pattern in the string. As you can see, we have matched the pattern in the string after three shifts in the main string. So our if condition is satisfied and we now need to look for the next match. So we set i is pi of 6 which is 2 and iterate through our for loop again. As we have another match, we, set, we increment i, is i by 1 and keep doing so till we find a mismatch or till we match the pattern in the string. As we have a mismatch and as i is greater than 0, our while condition is satisfied, so we set i as pi of 5, which is 1. However, as we have reached the end of the string, which is the termination condition for our for loop, we have reached the end of the algorithm. As we go through every character in the main string only once, the complexity of the KMP search algorithm is linear, as we said before. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed our video.